Hey, welcome to the Entrepreneur of the Month podcast brought to you by GetResponse, the marketing software with more than 300,000 customers around the globe. My name is Jamie Turner. I'm an author, speaker, and an ambassador for GetResponse, and I'll be your host for today's show. I'd like to welcome Richard Wong to the show. Richard is the head of marketing and creator relations at Hashtag Paid. Richard, glad to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, last time you were here, you were telling us a little bit about influencer marketing and that influencer marketing wasn't necessarily just for big companies, that it could be for smaller companies as well. And of course, Hashtag Paid is one of the better digital firms out there that's helping people connect brands and and influencers. You had previously talked to me a little bit about your background working at some of the great companies. P&G was one of them. You worked on CoverGirl Cosmetics, Johnson & Johnson, was another one where you were working on Band-Aid. And then, of course, you worked at Google. I'm going to go through each of those because I know our listeners are probably really interested in what it was you learned at those companies because those are famous companies for doing great jobs with marketing. But let's start with P&G. What, what brands did you work on at P&G? Yeah, so P&G, um, that's where I did my first internship um, in marketing. And so I worked on CoverGirl Cosmetics And back in that time, um, Twitter first launched. And so another project that myself and all the interns worked on was um, like they gave us a big project and said, what's social media? Uh, What should we do? And what is how social media going to change the world of marketing? And so they tasked it to a bunch of us on the interns uh, and we came together and presented a techniques of how, you know, a company like Procter & Gamble can leverage social media. And look where I am now. Wow, fascinating! And did you did you, were you able to figure out how to use it at all? I mean, was it effective, or was it still so early that you're just kind of doing experiments, trying to figure the whole thing out? So there are so many different things that we realized about this. Um, one of the one of the easy, quick takeaways that we end up having was uh, leveraging social media listening tools. Um, we are very data driven. I think at Procter and Gamble, um, one of the things you start to learn at the, some of those major companies is it's like every single decision that's been made has like many different type of analysis put together. And social media was like this whole new thing, which allowed us to be able to use metrics to see how much are people talking about these different type of products. Um, one of the things we actually realized was we even found a competitor product that was about to launch uh, that particular summer. And so we were able to send a team out there to be able to see what the new products were going to be before they end up launching. Um, and so those are just like things you can discover off of social media listening. Wait, I got to stop you there. So that's fascinating. So you guys figured out that a competitor was going to introduce a product because you just listened to social media and heard about it. One of their wow. brand ambassadors was like, off to launch this new product, blah, 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 blah. Wow. Which like it wouldn't happen, I think now nowadays <laughs> because of NDAs. But um, yeah, we were able to find out um, what other competitors were doing. That's uh, that's I mean for the brands you worked on, that's powerful stuff because you're you know you're you're talking about every everything you can possibly do to win the, the battle that you're fighting every day, and a little thing like that can lead into stuff. So that's fascinating. Keep going. I interrupted you. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I primarily worked on, um, on CoverGirl Cosmetics. Um, it was, you know, the number one cosmetics brand by, um, based on like the total like market share as a brand, um, got to work on the launch of a bunch of different type of new products, probably dating myself, but anyone who's familiar with the cosmetics category, worked on Lash Blast Mascara's launch, uh, which was their new famous mascara brand that was comes in those bigger bottles. Um, and that was like a really exciting part to be, to be a part of. Wow, fascinating stuff. So then you did, you did that. And one of the things you said to me previously was that it was better, a better education than business school. What did you mean yeah. by that when you were learning the stuff at P&G? So I think especially for a lot of your listeners around here, um, while not to undercut the fact of business school and business schools are fantastic, I uh, went to a great school and even worked for a short period of time afterwards with that school, um, but there's nothing quite like industry experience and actually going through the pain points. And I call it the war stories um, of actually being in the weeds of figuring out when I'm doing a competitor, 
if I lower my price and my competitor lowers their price and everyone continue to lower the, this like race to the bottom, then nobody wins. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just so much more practical and like really great knowledge that you can end up applying uh, versus a lot of the theory that you'd end up learning at school. And especially now that marketing, I, I, it, a lot of my conversations with my, my own team, I say that marketing, this is one of the most exciting times to be working in marketing because the world of marketing is changing so rapidly and there's nowhere closer than actually working in this industry to be able to, to understand what's going on. Um, I think groups like Get Response and I think my group and a lot of these other things are pushing the limits that no business school could even catch up to the type of content development that we didn't have be able to produce because the world of marketing and advertising is changing so fast. You know, it's really interesting you say that because I am an adjunct professor down at University of Texas as well as Emory University here in Atlanta. And one of the reasons I'm in is because they're saying we want the practitioner's experience coming in so that we can talk about the theory. And theories are frameworks and theories and strategic insights are important. So nobody's taken away from that. But to your point, Things change so rapidly, you got to go in and say, last month we did this and this is what we learned. And if you're not doing that kind of stuff on an ongoing basis and people walk away going, yeah, I learned a lot of theory, but I I didn't learn practical application. That's that's really fascinating stuff. So so in that case, better than business school. That's terrific. Now, from P&G, you went on to J&J. Tell tell me, what would you work on at J&J? Yeah, so J&J, I worked on... Band-Aid, um, Johnson Johnson's First Aid, um, as well as working on Visine, so the eye drops groups. Um, Great. Anything? Would you any any insights or any anything case studies you learned there about marketing in general? Yeah. So for this part, um, I got to work on a lot of the production of like some creative and commercials and doing a lot of that fun stuff. And just being exposed to that, the number one biggest takeaway was kind of helped me launch what I was doing after J&J, which was um, understanding that a lot of the big companies, um, the way that how they operate and make decisions is very conservative by nature. They want to see the proven case studies. They want to be able to see this. And I think that's a typical conservative natural state. And I think it's not just exclusive to the big companies. I think a lot of entrepreneurs also feel the same way where, how do I know this is the right decision? Um, and so where I found was really great was developing kind of the consumer insights. And I think some of the best training that you get from call those to the traditional brand marketing companies is understanding and trusting what's the consumer want, what's their insight, how do they make decisions and how can you affect that side? Um, by nature, all of us like humans are very emotional people. Uh, we don't make logical decisions a lot of the times. Um, how can you understand how people make decisions and how can you end up applying that? And how do you reach the right type of people in the right ways? And so for me, that got me understanding that, you know, things like TV and and traditional type of areas like that, um, while they still have a ton of eyeballs on there, it's not where the future of marketing and advertising is headed. And so that inspired me to end up going and leaving and joining the digital, the digital nomads. Um, And that's when I worked at Google. Um, launching and teaching about the future of advertising and, and marketing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. I think you were involved with uh, th- uh, Think with Google. Is that right? Yeah. So Think with Google, uh, for those who are listening who aren't familiar, my shameless plug is it's a free site and online resource for you to be able to get data, insights, research, case studies on and interviews from some of the best thought leaders around the world around the future of marketing and advertising. Wow, cool. So I get that and uh, and it drops in my inbox and it is great. It's as good as uh, as you've mentioned and there's a ton of interesting stuff to learn from it. Um, to, if you were giving advice, so you, you've been at hashtag paid for quite some time and, and have, was, you were one of the early employees there. So effectively, you're an entrepreneur. We've got a lot of folks here who are listening and would love to grow to be as big as hashtag paid. What, what are some of the lessons you learned while you were going through the growth stages about working in a fast growth environment or working in a startup or just working in general that you can pass along to some of our listeners? Yeah. So I, for me would be, I think the number one story is like be flexible. Um, you may have a plan, you may have something that's out there, but there's so many, especially in those early days, there's such a fine line. You're running on such a thin line of like success and and not success. And 
my number one is like be flexible and understand where it's the market doing. Um, we like very early on, um, one of the big competitors and the big titans of our space, um, they actually went bankrupt. And so that caused a huge amount of like craziness within our space. And for us, it's what, well, what about the creators, the, these people who are social media influencers? Like how do they start to get deals now? all their clients that they used to work with, like what happens to their stuff? They still want to do marketing. They still want to do advertising. And so what effective we did is like, we scrapped all of our marketing plans and said, okay, like how do we now discover this? How do we get good employees? Like some of the greatest employees that they had there who are still really smart people, like where are they going to work? And so for us, that was, how do we now one, like hire the right type of talent? How do we grab some of their like, networks and how do we help support the community and the ecosystem that happens with one of your competitors taking out and then how do you start to talk to a lot of the the clients on that side and those customers still need to get served and be able to be like helped and so i think for a lot of those people like i'd say the biggest difference between like say a big scaled fortune 100 company versus say a startup or like an entrepreneurial side is understanding that you have to be extremely flexible and very dynamic thinking when it comes to being a small team. Gotcha. So be flexible and dynamic. That's great. I got a curveball question for you. You, we were talking about P and G, J and J, and Google. Mm-hmm. Out of those three companies, if you had to pick one of them to go back to, not that you're thinking about that, which one would be your first choice? I'm not going to ask you for second and third choice, but just out of curiosity, yeah. which one would you want to land at? See, the thing is, each of those are doing so many really interesting things um, in their own right. Like p and is one of the largest advertisers and probably one of the foremost leaders of marketing itself. <coughs> J&J, the largest healthcare company in the world. Um, Google, again, massive titan within the space. Um, but if I were to go back, I would say, just given my love for social media and the creators and that entire world of the future of advertising and changing, um, would probably be back, probably back to Google. Um, I think the ecosystems and something that they have built there around the YouTubers and their entire community there is something really special. Um, and so if I were to ever go back, um, that would be a space that I'd probably look back to. That's cool. And handled, uh, not to categorize people, but, you know, Canadians have, and you're up in Toronto, Canadians have a, uh, this image of being so nice and diplomatic. And every Canadian I've ever met fills that role. And I'm just like, when am I going to meet a nasty Canadian? But you just did exactly, you know, you were very diplomatic. I appreciate that. I know the companies appreciate it too, about yeah. they're all great companies, but if you had to make me choose, I'd choose one. So the well yeah. done. And, and that's a compliment to not only you, but also to your fellow, fellow Canadians. Tell me as we round the bend here, tell me a little bit more about hashtag paid and how a business can work with hashtag paid and what kinds of things that you guys would help them do. For sure. So hashtag paid is an influencer marketing platform um, that helps connect marketers with people who are famous on social media. We call them influencers or as we really call them internally uh, creators. And so where we do from our platform is after you give us the, a lot of marketers, give us the brief and plug in all their different areas, uh, what we want to do is add a bit of science to it. So who are you trying to reach? Who is your target market? What does your brand stand for? What is the right type of brand fit? And we have over 15,000 creators on our roster, like um, globally, they're all been vetted, they've been onboarded, and they know how to operate off of this. And so what we end up doing is going through the whole list of them and providing recommendations based off of a, an AI machine learning algorithm to be able to figure out who are the right type of people that would make the right type of mix? And it's more than just say you're targeting someone who's in their 30s. Um, technically, someone like a Katy Perry might end up fitting there, but her audience is so much younger um, versus something, say, Adele. And I'm using bigger names just for broad yeah. context. Yeah. Um, Adele is actually younger than that, but her audience is so much older. And so even small little nuances like that, um, it breaks your natural intuition, breaks kind of the analog side of talent management, uh, and adds a bit of more science around this. And then on top of finding the right type of creators to end up working with, um, we also have all their costs all laid out there, a full collaboration management tool. So 
a lot of our different people who internally run this for a lot of our clients right now, um, they went from the typical person who could probably manage, say, one campaign at a time to now managing like 16 at a time. Um, and so there's a lot of efficiencies just being able to manage a lot of these different groups. And so for a lot of small businesses, if they were to use, say, our platform like this, um, it doesn't have to be a dedicated person to be able to manage all of these different types of relationships to get this and try this at scale. They can do this as part of their job overall. Cool. Awesome. Richard Wong, head of marketing and creator relations at Hashtag Paid. Uh, and I will mention it is hashtag spelled out paid.com just out of curiosity do you also i don't even know if you can have a url with a with a real hashtag in it do you no, know you cannot use the actual like yeah. pound sign paid um over there but i think our our dev team has got a whole bunch of other type of url redirects but if you just type into google or any of the other type of searches you should be able to find us Awesome. And I can't encourage people enough to do that. The website looks terrific. And I know you guys are a, a top-notch company. I am so glad you've been with us today, uh, Richard. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jamie Turner. I'm a brand ambassador for Get Response. Richard, thanks again for joining us. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie.